Greetings, Shabbat Shalom. Jesus said, Now do you Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but inward, the inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. You fools did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also. But rather give alms of such things as you have, and behold, all things are clean unto you, but woe unto you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought to have you ought to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe well unto you, Pharisees, for you love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. Woe well unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Woe well unto you, lawyers, for you laden men with burdens grievous to be borne, and you yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for you build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly you bear witness that you allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and you build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them shall they slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. Woe unto you, lawyers, for you've taken away the key of knowledge. You entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering you hindered. I like it in uh, Luke because it, it uses the word lawyers. Lawyers. The keys of knowledge that the elites took. And were hidden away, but yet they don't use them. They don't use those principles that Jesus taught. And, and I believe that a lot of what Jesus said um, and was talking about was made cryptic in the Bible by them that wanted to obscure it. But alas, they didn't obscure it from people that have the Holy Spirit. What they did is they served God inadvertently to obscure the teachings of Jesus that are esoteric, meaning that would give you entry into the kingdom of God, that would give you the spiritual experience that is profound and mysterious that the world cannot comprehend. But I believe they edited heavily the scriptures in order so that people would not get the teachings of Jesus. And of course, now we want to go to Matthew 13. Once again, I used to do this a lot, Matthew 13. But we have to, we have to do this. Yes, this is uh, the sower. The field is the world, the good seed of the children of the kingdom. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. So the, seed, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. And this proves, this is where I can prove my point that I'm going to make here in a minute. Much more succinctly, I was just telling Trish earlier that Jesus said the wheat and the tares will grow together, but what are the tares? The tares, you'll see in a minute, this all refers to genetics. The tares, I'm having a little... Uh, because it's early, I have to have my little... I mm. hope you're having a cup of coffee as well. I don't really have coffee. I have espresso because it's uh, much more efficient, not acidic, less liquid, whatever. It was a requirement for my own health needs. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. And in Luke, I'm sorry, in Matthew 13, when Jesus in the, in, you know, says earlier on, the wheat and the tares will grow together, in Matthew 13, he defines what the tares are. The tares are simply the children of the devil. 
you know, um, th- just like you are the children of God, they are the children of the devil, period. Now, I know there's been a lot of misunderstanding in Christianity over the years that Jesus can save anyone, but we stop short when we say, well, but Jesus cannot save the devil. Would you agree with that? Would you stipulate that for the record? Jesus cannot save the devil. The devil's not going to bow down to Jesus, right? It's, it's, it's an impossibility. And looked at, you have to look at it not, you have to look at it more like uh, the best way to look at it is rather as a mathematical situation and not a personal one. Because a lot of this, a lot of what's in scripture has to do with the planets, with, with science actually, but a science that scientists cannot figure out. The science of dimensionality, you know, that a lot of this is stories and metaphors designed to speak to us as children, but there's a higher, more esoteric understanding that's more scientific or more, could almost be um, just called informational. You know, genetic research, for example. Um, you know, uh, astronomy. Okay, um, the 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 mysterious mystery of history, how it keeps changing. Right, the history keeps changing. We sometimes catch it. I have with obituaries where, you know, there was someone I knew was dead. I mean, this happened a few years ago. I said with Jack Palance, the 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 old actor that was in the westerns and whatnot. Anyway, he, uh, when it was announced he died a few years ago, we were going, no, there's no way. He died about two or three years before that because I remember the announcement. And then, no, this was the first one. And you do an obit search, you find there is no Jack Palance, but I distinctly remember it. I mean, I remember it, and there's no way you can take that away from me. It did happen. He did die. It was about three years or five years. It was, it was a good period of time before the announcement a few years ago, but it did happen. Then it happened with someone else, and I forget who it was right now, but it happened with another person that I knew had died. I'd seen the obit, and I I read the obit, I remember. Well, multiply that by everything. Multiply that by every event in your life and every event in the world. Imagine that's constantly changing, but you in your mind, it's, it's, it's synchronous. Okay, this is what I tried to explain to you when I said the word of God. Well, it doesn't, the word doesn't change, but scriptures can change. They never blaspheme themselves, no. I mean, except for things like Romans 13, which is, which is basically, still you can't kill it. But I mean, it was heavily edited. But they still couldn't take the truth out of it. You know, they couldn't take what the word of God is, out. Anyway, so Jack Palance had died a few years earlier. I'd seen the obit, I remember it distinctly, and then there he is, you know, three years later. And this goes for, didn't this happen with several people? It wasn't just Jack Palance, it was like there was a string of people that I think what the Lord was doing is showing us this secret. And that also opens up the secret of time travel because we know time travel is going on, so what we want to do is we want to, uh, we really, you know, perhaps the Lord will show us what we mean when we're talking about time travel. And I'm waiting for the sun to come up here and to illuminate the, the words, keeping the Sabbath holy because we're doing the Lord's work, amen? The enemy, okay, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom. Okay, so... What is a child of God? What is the wheat? The wheat is a child of God, period. That means he was made for the Lord. Made meaning whatever genetic material went in to make this flesh and blood body, he was made for the Lord. Okay? There was some, and I have further answer on this, there was some component within him, though we say we're fallen in a genetic way because we were messed with with the fallen angels and all that, and there's a whole thing of, our progenitors progenitating us. And even that doesn't bother me if you say there's progenitors and let's say that turns out to be true. 
um, they're just the Lord's fingers. The Lord uses everything and everyone, including the devil and everybody in every kingdom and everybody everywhere and everything everywhere and every sun and every moon and everything. He uses everything. You know, it's not a personal thing when you're not, when you're in humanity, it's personal. Oh, that's evil. That's terrible. But from an objective perspective, those are pieces that are being moved around for the purpose of, of the story the Lord is, is, is uh, telling in, through making of things, through the making of the worlds and the destruction of the worlds, he's telling a story. So Jesus says directly, and this is really important, he said, the field is the world, right? The world, and when we say the world, we mean the world of, of you know, the situation we're in as humanity. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, right? The enemy that sowed the tares is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. Okay, so here we're getting just clear rhema. Okay, just identifying everything succinctly in a way that had not ever been done before when it was in Matthew 13. Huh, very strange, but we're just going to go with it. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one, and the enemy is the one that, uh, that, that, that sowed the, the, you know, these tares. He is the devil. He made them. When it says sowed the tares, it means that he, he, the devil, the fallen angels, Lucifer, Satan, whatever, he made them. They were made. He sowed them, you know, as an extension of, you know, it was God's will. We were made in his image, and then there was a uh, a fall, and then there was um, uh, a corruption of the genome, Right? And he sowed them, the devil, and the Lord sowed us, his children, with a, um, and there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a verse of scripture that goes with that as well, which is that the sheep hear my voice, Jesus said. Okay, but the, the they cannot hear, the, the tares, those the devil has made, cannot hear, uh, they were made not to hear the Lord. They can't hear no matter what. I know a lot of you are hating this because you're like, oh, everything is love, we're all one, and all that's not true. But that's you gotta grow up on that. That's not that's not my issue. I've I've already um accepted the way things are. It took quite a few years to be able to uh understand, but once I started understanding, guess what happened? I became at peace with this. You know, I mean I accepted who they are and who we are and the difference and I'm good with it. It's when they try to blur those lines that we all get into trouble. So there's more, you know. So the enemy, he is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the world. So when we hear about the scythe and reaping and the sowing, we're talking about the end of the world, the end of this present world and this age. The, the age, we're in the time of the end of the world, of the end of things. And... uh you now the clock has sort of run out on the ages, so there are no more ages to go through. Now it's just basically the it's going to be the, the the grand conflict, the vengeance of the Lord, the grand finale, and then a making the worlds anew. And then that's where you have new bodies, new you know you're 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 not it's not the same thing as this. Okay, so the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Just very clear, there's also a reference to Joel 3.13 there, which, you know, the reapers are the angels. The angels have a job. The angels are doing the reaping, and the reaping is thusly. Let's be very clear. The reaping is the destruction of the tares and the gathering of the good seed or the children of God simultaneously. They're angels that that are angels of destruction and destroy that which should not be here in the first place. And they're angels of ascension, you know, that, that you know, there, there's like a dual function there. And there are many, um, 
I mean, I want to so you know, I, I like to to clear this thing up. As far as angels of destruction, angel of the whirlwind, angel in the sun, angel here, angel there, there's basically zillions of these angels, uh, you know, working and eat like the angel of death would be zillions of angels on the angel of death. You know, there'd be, right, these are, these are um, specific beings that do specific things. And uh, they get in the way of the new world order all the time and they guide people to safety. And angels can have different functions, like they're not just, one will be just destruction, that's all they do. But, you know, they're servants of the Most High. And they, um, they basically, all, all they're really about is just being extensions of His will. They help make, shape, create, and destroy the worlds. You know, God is, creates through His creation. He destroys through his creation, but it's all a, a perfect tapestry of his love. And, and in the end, we will all see that. Well, the, 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 the terrorists don't want to see it, so they, they really, in a way, you could make a case for they, they don't really exist since they're separated from God and willfully so. Their wills are engaged, and that's, you know, they hear their father's voice and they heed, just like. You hear Jesus' voice at some point, and you heed. The angels are also involved in gathering the prodigals, the prodigal sons and daughters who've been burned by the church. They hate, you know, they want to be cool in the culture. You know, to be cool in the culture, you have to what? Hate God. Why do um, leftists hate conservatives? Because conservatives, by and large, have God. You know, they revere God, and that's really the whole, con- there, there is no other reason. Now, it's got nothing to do with policies or issues. It has to, it's God. Anyway, let's get to Jesus' amazing... T- I'm, I'm, I, I'm taking aside here for a reason so I can go back and pound on you again with this. The enemy that sowed... the Okay, so the terrors came from where? What are they? They're the children of Satan, okay? And the wheat and the terrors grow together. There's two different seeds who are at enmity with each other, okay? These seeds, these two genetic strains cannot, will not ever get along. It, it goes beyond genetics. It's, it's hypergenetics, meaning hyperdimensional genetics. Okay, Genetics has a component in the physical, like you can see a strand of DNA, but that's nothing. That's just a, all that is seeing um, a tip of an iceberg. A gene is multidimensional. It has properties beyond what can be seen in a, in a microscope. So the enemy that sowed them and sowed, the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels, okay? As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it shall be at the end of this world. The angels are responsible for uh, the, the Revelation 18 end of things. So we spent a lot of time on that, which is the vengeance of God, okay? That's really all that's about. There isn't anything... Uh, you know, the vengeance of God and the ascension of the word of God in Revelation 19, the establishment of the word, the king of kings and lord of lords. This king comes to rule and reign forever, and he is the king and the lord and God and all, and, and forever and ever that kingdom comes in as spoken of by Daniel the prophet and spoken of by Isaiah and all the other prophets. And also, you know, he is, you know, the king can only be the son of God, right? He must come directly from the father. And to you know, and we're going to get into another day what the Father really is. You know what I am really means. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels. So here we are. the The angels are the ones who reap. The angels are the ones who gather the tares and burn them in the fire. The angels are the ones that gather out of his kingdom. That, that come to gather his kingdom together, and um. And, 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 and to gather out, I'm sorry, they come to gather out of the kingdom all things that offend and them, them, them which do iniquity. When, when it says do iniquity, that means satanic rituals, satanic ritual abuse, satanic rituals, things done in secret, uh, whether it, you know, it usually is it's bloodletting and perversion, pedophilia, all these kind of things, pedophilia with a purpose as satanic ritual or or uh, the, the, whole, the whole point of sex in these rituals is to enslave their own and keep, keep their own in a hive mind mentality. 
that's why, yes, they're in Washington, and that's why they all can, they have like little signals with their eyes, and they, they don't have to say anything to each other. They already know what each other's thinking. They have no freedom. They are in jail. So the Son of Man, he commands the angels, you know, the Son of God. He commands the angels, and he sends them to gather out those things that offend. So he's pointing toward um, Revelation 18 right now, and also what leads up to it. All the bowls, judgments, the vials, the more specifics about what the judgments are. Um, and I would even include with that the mark of the beast and everything else. The angels are being sent out to make sure all those things happen. Um, the angels also it, it are a mystery in the sense of the seven thunders and that that could not be written down by John in the Revelation. These Some of these things need to be you know sealed up because they're... There are things that will be revealed in the New Jerusalem or the time of the end that will all make sense. But uh, a lot of this has to do with if you knew everything right now, you would what? You would not do anything. You would not be an actor in this situation. The Lord made us to be actors, to be extensions of his will. If you knew it all right now, you wouldn't function. So therefore, some things have to be sealed up. Anyway, so, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom and all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, second mention of that here, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yes, because they of the world, they of the, of the media, they of Washington, D.C., and all the capitals of the world, they felt that, you know, they were man, and they were blessed by, you know, God, their God, and they were going to be left alone because they felt that the world was owned by the fallen angels, and they weren't going to be moved out of this estate. They were going to stay here. But see, at that point, in other words, Jesus is laying on us a prophecy. At the end of time, and only at the end of time, when justice is meted out, the angels will be sent forth to take the tares away. Now, Jesus earlier on said, now look, the wheat and the tares grow together. They will grow together until the end of time. The harvest of the end of the world, the angels are sent out to take all those things, all their buildings. Yes, there will be an angel that actually removes all the obelisks, all the pyramids worldwide. Every artifact that they held dear will be, it'll be like this. One day you see it and the next day you don't. And when you don't see it, the people who are on the earth, who are connected to all those things, they will know what that means, and many will commit suicide on that day. Then shall the righteous shine forth as, as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Well, not many. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hidden a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for a joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he has, and buyeth that field, very similar to the pearl uh, 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 parable. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant uh, man seeking godly pearls. Well, here we are with the pearls. Who then has found one pearl of great price, went and sold, it, sold all that he had and bought that one pearl, because he found the best one. Which, when it was full, um, again, in a third parable, the kingdom of, God, of heaven is like unto a net, that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. It's very important to understand that the churches have been teaching this wrong from day one. It's two things, two seeds, two realities here. One, when they gathered all the fish, they cast the bad away and kept the good. There were fish of every kind, but some were bad. Not good for eating. So bad away, good in. The kingdom of heavens, like unto a merchant, you know, bad, all the pearls that the, the, the man had, not as good. They were cast away in favor of the one true pearl, the ultimate pearl. That was the one. What they've taught you in your churches, 
is that everybody's got a chance, blah, 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 and all this stuff. And um, I'm sorry they hurt you that way. Uh, In knowing the truth, two things occur. One, you can stop beating yourself up because you realize that you belong to God. And, And yes, you have your flesh. And you must repent often, and, and you know. But in knowing this identity, you just sort of get better. When you think everybody is everything and everything is everything, brother, it's all it's all love and peace in Jesus. When they teach you that crap, that lie, that's a Luciferian lie because they're Luciferians that are in the church. They took over eons ago, <laughs> and they were allowed to. It was up God's. See, the bet between God and the devil is. Jesus said, my children, my sheep, hear my voice and heed. The ultimate test is for Satan to take over the churches and then say, okay, let's see if they heed now. And they still heed. (laughs) So Satan lost that bet. Yeah, Satan wants to be, you know, the most high God. He wants to be in charge of everything, and he wants it to appear good and just and right. To fool people, not to fool people, but it's basically because he wants to imitate the Father and, and rise himself above and consider himself superior to the Father and have a superior system. You join on with that, look how you're taken care of, but, but if you don't join on, you're punished. So Satan is, I'm going to take the bad seed, that's you, that's me, and I'm going to burn it and get rid of it and torture it and punish it well. Well, I exalt my kingdom, i.e. the people that were the terrors that were made for him. So what we have in the world today is basically a world where the terrors rule, the children of Satan rule the world, and they can and they rule all the religions, not just Christianity, but all of them, and all the institutions, and inclu- including um, the United States Congress and Supreme Court and all of it. It's not of God anymore. That was kicked out a long time ago. It, you know, if it ever was, the the the, wheat, the tares were there. The Illuminati and their, um, you know, masonry and all that was there in 1776. So you can't just say that was all good. It was not. There was a chance for good. There was good mixed in with it. And then eventually the, the leaven leavened the whole lump and everything went bad. So um, let, let's continue on here. So, again, the kingdom is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore, sat down, and gathered the good, the good fish, into these vessels and cast the bad away. So shall, at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth. Here we are. How many references to angels in Matthew 13? Well, you you can write me and tell me. So, at the end of the the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, there shall be, second time around here, wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, have you understood all these things? And they said, yes, Lord. Then he said to them, therefore, every scribe which is instructed into the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, that he departed thence. And when he had come into his own country, he taught them in the synagogue insomuch as they were astonished by the teaching and said, whence had this man this wisdom? These are mighty works. So the Bible is telling us here that we have just been given a, um, a mighty work according to the people and the witnesses of that time. Now, I oftentimes do this where I begin with the end of a thing, and now we're going to go to the beginning of, and we're going to go to the serious mystery of Jesus right here. And this is the beginning of Matthew. We just did the end of 13. We're now in the beginning. I'm just going to kind of cut to the, to the mystery. 
The disciples are asking Jesus, now, why is he teaching in these parables? And then, and he's been teaching about the, 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 the seed sower, you know, 13 is the seed sower. And then he explains the seed parable. And this is the deepest rhema, I think, of the Bible. And it often, um, because we're dealing with the mystery of Christ here, this is, this is the whole kit and caboodle, folks. This is it. Because it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Understand. The kingdom of heaven is a mystery. Jesus is a mystery. We are mysteries. Compared to what? Compared to the world. Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. The two seeds. They Now listen very closely because you'll thank me later because your grief grief meter will go down to about zero. They cannot. What this means, it's not not a matter of being given to them. It means they cannot comprehend. You can. You may not be able to say what it is you comprehend, but you just know. They cannot know at the most basic level. No matter how much you talk to them till you're blue in the face. And yes, the good and bad seed can come from the same womb. The bad seed does well in the world, is revered highly and respected. The good seed is disrespected, typically. Opposites of what should be if we had the, the kingdom set right. We're like through a mirror in a mirror world here where things are backwards. But not for long. You just have to contend with it a while longer. Understand this very carefully, very closely. Just get this into your, and and never forget it. To you, you were given the answer. You were given the key to the mysteries of heaven, meaning the mysteries of the kingdom of God. You were given meaning the mysteries of the word of God, meaning the whole thing. You've given it, you have it all within you right now. You may not be able to articulate it yet, but you know that you know. You have all, every key to every truth of these mysteries. These are what the spiritualists, the Freemasons, and all these different secret societies, Pythagoras cults and and mystery religions of Greece and all these people from the very beginning of time and tantric cults in the, the East. And they've all tried to understand And they cannot understand. That's why they keep seeking. That's why they form secret societies. Because they cannot understand. You know, the esoteric Buddhism and Buddhist philosophy sought to understand all this so fervently and they failed to understand. But you, as a child, were given that. In fact, before you were born, you were given this key. And then when you were born, you had it. And part of, the, of my proof is the sheep will hear my voice. Well, how would that be? Because you had to be given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It, it was a genetic thing. It had to be given to you. You had to be made with it in order to hear his voice. If you hear his voice, then you know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. They could be your parents, your siblings, your spouses, your teachers, usually the wise people in society are the ones who cannot who, and you got to cut them some slack. Lord, forgive them. They cannot comprehend what you were given because it's not in them. It wasn't given to them. They weren't made with it. These are very strong words here. There's, this is not like an opinion. Some people get it, some don't. This is how you were made as a being on earth. You either were made with the chip that comprehends, you know, to put it in computer terms, you either have the translation chip or you don't. And there's just nothing, all this angst about the people aren't going to give themselves to Jesus, they're not going to be raptured and all that. That's all a hoax. All that is doing is that's sowing division and ignorance among the people. Know who you are. You don't need somebody to tell you. The sun is right in my face. I love it. Hallelujah. The Son of God is rising, rising. That's our song. 
you'll be hearing more of that because, we're, yeah, it's just I have a lot of work to do, folks. <laughs> yeah. For whosoever has, to him it shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. Now, the, the last time I was around in this chapter, I was not given the deep rhema as I am today. So here you go. Here's the answer to, to what I posed the question earlier. For anyone who's fo- followed along, we've tried to make it difficult for you to follow along. And so, and there's a reason for that too. For whosoever, who ha- whosoever has this that was given to you, blah, blah, blah. Okay. In other words, whosoever has this gene, to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance but whosoever has not from him, it shall be taken away, even what little he has. He, the Lord will take away the little bit of understanding they have of the mystery as to seal it up. He will not allow the mystery to go forth amongst the heathen, uh, the heathen meaning them made the way they're made. You, you were given this, okay? You were, it was given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So who has this? Uh, to you it shall be given and you'll have more abundance. In other words, throughout your life, you will have more understanding of the mysteries and you'll, you'll know more as an internal kind of, it's almost as if your cells know more. It's not an intellectual thing necessarily. You come to know more and you become, you become the kingdom of heaven on earth is what, is what the mystery is really all about. You become that which was sown into you, that, how that you, you mature into that which God is making to be a witness to the nations. So and this applies on a, on a more carnal, you know, to, to the, him who has, he's given more, to the, the, you who don't have or you're holding on. And you're, there's a principle here of, of life where if you're hoarding and you're worried, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're coveting and you're grabbing that little bit because you don't have much, um, the Lord's going to just get, he's going to really get on you because what he's going to do is he's going to give it to the guy that has a lot. And you, who've been struggling and struggling and saving, and you're going to be, it's like you're not going to be blessed, but the guy that has a lot, it is feeling like cool and appreciative and walking with ease in the world, he's going to be given more. And you angsty one who's angry and Covetous has got a chip on your shoulder about, you know, say money and other people that have money. You don't, and you know, I, and you and you crimp and, and save and grab and stick your your dimes in this and stuff. Then, and, and you know, you're just that attitude. It's an attitude. Okay, you, um, the Lord will take away even that little bit that you're 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 scraping and scrimping to have. He'll take that away because he's he has to change you. You can't be like that. That's not a child of God. You have to be at ease and at peace in the kingdom. And, and yeah, to the guy that's got, you know, the, the Rolls Royce or whatever, or whatever it is, you know, he, in other words, the one who has the attitude of open-handedness, he's just trusting the Lord and going day by day, and he feels a sense of abundance in everything. He's given more. And you who've struggled, it's taken away from you, struggle more. Because you don't get it. So there is, and I taught that particular thing, but now we're deeper. We've gone deeper, okay? I just wanted to mention that because that was a very important thing. If you want more abundance in your life and more ease on the finances, you know, I'll just give you the Creflo dollar. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> dollar. My name is uh, Ulysses S. Grant dollar. Okay, so you, uh, you want more, okay? More comes to those who have a sense of appreciation and gratitude for what they have. And they walk with ease. Even, it may not be as rich as the neighbor or the other guy at the office or whatever it is or the, the, the inherited wealth person or any other person. You, you, you're just uh, comparing yourself to... You know, and when you walk in peace and you're not comparing yourself to other people and not mad at other people for what they have and you don't and not bitter about how you've been cheated and all that, when you finally open up and go, oh my God, I'm God's child. I'm in the kingdom of God. I'm, uh, I'm here as a witness to the, oh, 
Oh, wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just cool. And then you're out playing with the kids. Um, that's a man, you know, I'm thinking of a man now. That's a man that will be blessed. But to the one, bitter and angry of how he was chumped and cheated and has to be doing this job. He doesn't want to do it and he'd rather be doing this and not doing that and looking at other people and being angry and jealous. To that one, he'll be taken away. So that that's like the, the most base carnal interpretation of this. But it is a spiritual principle. Always the people that I really envied. When I was a kid, I envied this guy. He, You know what it was that I envied about him? He, he didn't have a lot of, his parents didn't really spoil him. And he, you know, had some little job. And he had this, I remember he had this, uh, VW camper, we were all surfers as kids. So the whole thing is when you got to be 16, you wanted to somehow afford a camper, an older one, you know, so that you could go on safaris, so that you could uh, surfari, you could drive up to Santa Cruz and you could stay in your van or Halama Bay or one of these places where the winter breaks or the ranch or one of these places and you could stay in your in your camper and, and that was cool for a kid 17 having a camper, being able to sleep over at the, you know, those days you could just park in the parking lot of anywhere and and uh, pop pop the top up. Or you know, Usually in those days they didn't even have a pop top, but you had your little bed and your thing and you know, your little stove. And for someone that age, that was just great. And you could go surfing and that was the whole culture of that. That Volkswagen van was so popular. And he had one of those... And he just loved surfing. We we went on lots of surf trips together. And he had like uh, I remember the day he got like the good tunes and the thing. He got uh, he got the cassette player or something going, and you know we were listening to uh, Hendrix and the Allman Brothers and different you know and getting stoked up to go surfing. And you know that was it. The tune music was you know the tunes, the the lifestyle, the boards on the t you know the whatever. But there was a hedonistic side to all that too, of course, kids, you know. But that was like being hooked up. Um, now, the thing is, is that other kids in the, in the group he was in had, you know, cars and had, you know, deluxe vans and had, uh, you know, property in, you know, uh, Hawaii where they could go surf all day, you know, and all those kind of things. He never disparaged that at all. He, he was just so happy with his own situation. And he had his boards and his thing in his way. And he would do things that nobody else would do. I mean, he just had total appreciation and he was totally stoked about life. He was just in that zone. Well, he ended up being a very wealthy man. I mean, you know, he ended up being a very wealthy man. Uh, you know, it all kind of just came his way out of anyone else in the family. He was the one that was chosen to be the patriarch and end up being, you know, the one who kind of uh, set up the charitable foundation. A very wealthy situation, you know. But when he had little... He was stoked as could be and didn't disparage anyone for whatever they had and had no idea whether he'd be coming into any money or not. Or, and he had no, no uh, you know, he was kind of a dropout in a way. He wasn't a very good student and all that. He didn't disparage other people in their athletic ability. He was also a, a you know, semi-pro volleyball player and all that. He didn't, he didn't disparage anybody with their ability, a lack of ability, or their surfing ability versus his. None of that existed in this guy. And it was so attractive, and that's why I was just constantly wanting to be around him because I was kind of the opposite. I was just jealous of everyone and mad at everyone, and mad and just and 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 horrible person. It, I just started off horribly in things like that, just a horrible sinner in those ways. And 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 I had because of betrayal in my life, I had no trust. This guy would trust the situation, trust in other people. He would just and people left him alone, you know, and he would just glide right through. And, uh, you know, eventually I, I'm, you know, I, I, I saw where he did join up with the world and he did take the deal and, you know, just like everybody else. I didn't ever expect him to be, a you know. With me, it was like because there was betrayal, I was uh, distrusting. And I remember uh, uh, surfing in Maui at Honolulu Bay when it was pretty big and I just kept feeling there, were, there was like a demonic thing there, taking my board and just throwing it against the rocks on purpose, like just trying, and I was screaming and yelling at it, and, and he was there with me, and he got so embarrassed that I was screaming and yelling and angry, you know, just like somebody that doesn't catch a pass, they start, they berate themselves. Well, that was a demon. That was some horrible thing I had, you know. That was some awful, I don't even know what, 
that, that, that shouldn't have been there, you know. But uh, it got worked out by the Lord eventually. It really did. It got worked out by the Lord eventually. And, um, you know, this... No, I took it personally when I would wipe out. In those days, we didn't have leashes. And this was a, a place on Maui that had really, uh, you know, jagged rocks and, and shallow reefs when they were low tide that would cut you up. And um, if you lost your board, it would literally go into these caves and bash against the wall and, and you know, pretty much break. So we caught it on a couple of days with just a few people out. And, you know, was, and uh, I had a terrible time. I wasn't making the waves. I was, you know, the board was being taken. I was tired out from having to swim all the time. And, uh, and he was just gliding through. And, and it was, you know, and then he, he, at one point he said, I'm just going to act like I don't know you because you're yelling and screaming out here. This is totally uncool. You know? And I was screaming at the board. I was screaming at these invisible things that were taking my board and, and I felt and, and as it turned out, look, this has happened in my studio and different things. It all came from a place of being, you know, obviously violated, then distrust, distrust in the world, not being able to trust my mother, so I couldn't trust the world. So everything is taking away from me. It's stealing my thing. They took my board. They threw it together. I'm a victim, right? And I think the Lord put me around him to see, well this is what you could be if you know, this is more, see, do you see what's happened to you? And you know, what's interesting in life, as time has gone on, I've sort of become like this guy that I admired when I was a kid in the sense of, you know, and Trish has seen the change as well when I met her. I mean, it was still, you know, the world is a conspiracy against me. And uh, it's true, the world is a conspiracy against God's people, of course, but I mean, once you understand what I'm teaching here today, I'm trying to teach. I'm, I'm maybe I'm not really a very good teacher, but I don't even care. You know, it's it's just can you get this? If you get this lesson, then I'm a, I'm a genius teacher. When you understand about the wheat and the tares being two seeds, then you're really not going to. Get on yourself. When you understand this lesson, for whosoever has, it shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not, from him it shall be taken away, even than what he has. There are people that have abundance and think they don't have enough. And then what abundance they have is taken away as well. That's just the way it always works. You, when you don't appreciate what you have, it get, you lose that too. So... To whoever has, meaning I appreciate, you know, whatever I, I have, I'm, I'm rich. It's a feel, you know, I have my Volkswagen van and I have my surfboard. I have my health and I have some, you know, my juicer or whatever. I am totally stoked, man. This is awesome. Cool. I get to go paint a house today because I need some money so I can go out that next surf truck and just be a bum. So I'm just going to go paint. Okay, cool. Got some money. All right, I'm out of here, man. I'm down to Mexico or whatever. Okay, I'm just putting it in surf terms, but the point is, is that attitude ends up, these guys all became, who had that attitude, a lot of them wound up with great abundance in the world. I'm not saying they're, they're someone to follow. I'm saying this principle applies to all, whether you're a wheat or a tear, it doesn't matter. Okay, but the deeper mystery is, for whosoever has, what is he talking about in context? He's talking about, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, whosoever has that, you shall have more abundance. You will have more of the kingdom as if it was here now in your life. Walking the kingdom, you won't be angsty. You won't be fearful. You won't be upset. You're going to flow. You're going to show them what the kingdom is, aren't you? Because You've been given the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. Everyone who is God's child has been given that. Don't make me go back to, this is a flowing thing. It's all cumulative. You're going to have to go back and listen and roll the tape back. For whosoever has, to him it shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever does not have, I'm scribbling and crying, I'm ginning. It's a conspiracy. Get me. Ah, I don't know. From him, that person suffering in that way, it shall be taken away even the little he has. And I've experienced that directly. When I was in, the, in that victim mode, 
And my friend didn't know this. The reason I was yelling and screaming is because I was traumatized from being in satanic rituals and satanic ritual abuse. That wasn't dealt with. And I guess either he was okay with that or he, you know, maybe he was a, just a Luciferian right from the get-go. I don't know. I don't know. In the end, we were as far apart as day and night, as left and right, as east and west. You know, I was traumatized. I had no business being out there on a surfboard. Or in, 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 in the whole reason that I believe I was, you know, probably sent to, to, to Maui to be there at that time and, and you know, was probably to, uh, you know, somehow lightning would strike and I would come back uh, a member of the world system. In fact, I know that was the purpose. And it didn't happen. Yeah. But instead what happened is... I wailed and moaned about something that had happened. In other words, I couldn't go beyond what happened when I was a little child. So I just remained a little child in my teen years because I, I was still traumatized by that. I was, I was betrayed, therefore I could not trust the world, you see, or anything around me. And everything was coming at me to get me and hurt me. And, and I, was just, I could have just cried as a baby I could have cried like a baby and screamed and yelled just like a baby for a hundred years, probably, because it never went healed. It never was soothed. It was, it was never worked out. Little did I know at the time, I had the key to the kingdom of heaven. And others didn't have it. And the people who were con trying to console me and, and coax me into, you know, the only place you can go after this is the world system because then at least you'll be taken care of. You know, come on. Don't just remain a crying baby here. You know, come on. You can be somebody then. You can be a man of the world. And I could not hear that voice because I don't belong to that side. I belong to the Lord God Yahweh Almighty, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe I belong. I not only belong, I am so connected. I am there is no difference in a way. You know, I'm just this version of it. And I don't even, you know, I don't really beat myself up over the flesh too much. I, you know, the Lord understands. It's kinda of like you're here and there is the flesh you we contend with it. But we've never liked it. That doesn't mean we're not appreciative. But I'm laying on you a uh a secret here because it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of we're going to get this eventually if I have to repeat it a thousand times because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the, of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given whosoever has to him it shall be given okay so whosoever knows he has it and is appreciative and grateful and filled with gratitude of being God's child in the kingdom bearing the kingdom upon the earth Whosoever comes into knowledge and happiness over that, you're going to be given more, a lot more. But whosoever is hogtied with fear-based consciousness, conspiracies, it's all against you, you're a, you're, you're a, a beaten-down lamb, and so you have a victim mentality, you are going to suffer because you don't appreciate what you have. And... The Satanists know this lesson. This is what they teach back at the, you know, when you join the Satan side, you start to appreciate what you have and then Satan will give you more. You know, the Rocky Mountain way is better than the way you had. And that's exactly what Joe Walsh was singing about when he wrote that song, the Rocky Mountain way. All the ladies cry because it's sad. Uh, why? Because the, the boys go to the Satanic side so they cannot be victims of whatever. Okay, so they're, they hear their father, and when they come into that knowledge of who they are, what happens? They're given the world. When you come into the knowledge of who you are, you're given everything, the kingdom of heaven. You, the mystery is that you are the kingdom of heaven, in a sense, and it's, it's a multidimensional mystery, but I mean, that's the, 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 the building out of the kingdom is through you. <laughs> so not through any other being, I mean, through you, that's it. But, I mean, God's evidence is shown everywhere, but it's it's his uh, most profound work in a sense. 
and no, and Satan cannot contaminate the gene code, can, cannot put, cannot make you, if you have this genetic seed, if you are this seed line, he can't make you that his own seed line. That is impossible. And it's also the key to the mystery of the Lord doesn't lose any that are his. You know, the church has completely ignored that and have ignored this, considering it to be, say, esoteric or whatever. I mean, the New Agers teach this all the time. They'll say, have an attitude of gratitude and a lot of good things will come your way. Well, that's true. Absolutely true. And and funny how the children of God just seem to be so brainwashed by the negativity and being vict- painted as victims and the stories about the persecution of Christians that they can't rise above that. And therefore, they will not have more abundance. And therefore, they will go be without and wanting and eventually be like babies, complaining and whining all the time. Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not, and hearing, they, they hear not, neither do they understand. Now, understand this very carefully. We're moving on. This is 13.13 in Matthew 13. A lot of times the 13th is kind of important, but... Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. In other words, they see, but they don't understand. They see it's there. Now, this is really a message to the uh, churches and to the teachers of these churches who are vetted by Freemasons, and well, well that's the whole church system, but the, the, here it is. Therefore, speak I, wherever the you know, obelisks are, that's where they are. Speak, therefore, to them in parables, because they, I have to speak in parables. Well, he speaks in parables, but here's the thing. Who understands the parables? Only the children of God. So he speaks to them in parables because they seeing see not and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. He doesn't say they understand the parables. But he see, the point is, by speaking in a children's parable, there's no excuse. It makes it perfectly clear that no matter what, that you can speak as a five-year-old child and still they don't get it, proving what? That they are a different seed. Period. And that's, that's how many times has this been mistaught? A oh, trillion. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, of Elijah, which saith, by hearing you shall hear and, and shall not understand, and by seeing you shall see, but you will not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they've closed, lest at any time they shall see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they shall hear. Okay. The yearning of Jesus being a, in, in man form, was to save everybody. Even if it went against the ultimate logic of I don't lose any who are mine, but to heal everybody. For this people's heart is wax gross, their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted, and I should heal them. But they won't. That's the point. That's the point of this chapter. That's the context of these verses. But blessed are your eyes. Okay, you are not them. They, I would heal, in other words, if they would just have done this and that, I would have healed them. They would be converted. But they can't be. You can convert someone who was made with the God gene, with that seed, from being a prodigal, meaning I'm working in, in, in the world system. I don't know I'm a prodigal. I don't know I belong to God. And for some reason, I keep getting passed over for promotion. You know, the, the, we see our people out there. And when they come home, they're given a big feast. You know, they're, they're, they're treated, the answer to all their questions about why are answered. But blessed are your eyes, not their eyes, for you see, and your ears for... Uh, your ears hear, for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see 
and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Now who in the heck is he talking about here? For many of these prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. I mean, he's talking to the church. He's talking to the official prophets and the official righteous in the churches, you know, tying in with, uh, with, with the uh, scribes and Pharisee rebuke. Uh, these so-called righteous men have entered to see those things which you see and have not seen them and to hear those things you hear and have not heard them. Well, wouldn't anyone of God really heard and seen these things? especially the prophets and the righteous. But no. And then it goes on in about hearing the word of God. But, you know, it, it goes on to this parable of the sower, which is, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catch it away. In other words, yeah, whenever you get any rhema or anything that, the enemy always comes and takes it because they, they have a propaganda campaign to, to make to conform the world to the image of the beast. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same he is he that heareth the word and anon with joy receives it. Yet he has no root in himself, but dureth for a while. So he gets it for a while, but then when tribulation or persecution comes, um, then he's offended by it. He, he, he drops it. Um, what that means is that he doesn't notice the, the language that's used here. He doesn't have root in himself. What's root? It's not just the Holy Spirit. Root is like the, 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 the foundation. It's a genetic foundation is the way I look at it. He doesn't have the thing that you need to have because when the word was given to me, it just, it, it didn't go anywhere. It stuck. And I was in very bad shape because I had something in me that could receive it. So the average, you know, there are people out there who will, you know, part of the church system who will seem to get it for a while. But then when the persecution comes, this has happened to me so many times with the church. When anything started happening, they just distanced themselves from me like they didn't. You know, they didn't want to go through that or they didn't get the word in the first place because it doesn't have root in them. They don't have the code. They're not the same seed. And if, you're, if it doesn't have root in you, it, you can go for a while, but then when persecution comes, you'll drop it. That's not an option for, for it never has been. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. So he receives it among the thorns. The thorns and that is just all kinds of voices and doctrines and whatnot. And he hears the word and, and the care of the world and, and the care of this world. So he hears the word and the thorns are the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches of this world and chokes the word. In other words, he, he, his God is the world and, and worldliness, and that, and what happens is the word is uh, choked or killed in him. But he that received the seed into the good ground is he that hears the word and understands it, which also beareth fruit, meaning he puts it to use, and brings forth, meaning he puts it to use, some a hundredfold, and some sixty, and some thirty, meaning, you know, a total change and transformation. Another parable, um, anyway, it goes on in the different parables, but... Uh, I've just used that parable of the sower to, to, to translate it as per this rhema today. Once you know, and I'm going to shut this up now because I could, I could read one scripture after another and, and get off the point. You that have, oh, the sun is right in my face. That's, that's so amazing. Here it is wintertime and it's just basking in the sun. It's about uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, I guess. And we're on the Sabbath. The word is this. You belong to God. You are the Lord's. You needn't worry. And this, you know, Matthew 13 is compounding the uh, Sermon on the Mount as well. It's, just, it's constantly, you 
don't need to worry. You don't need to fret. You don't need to feel like a victim of the world, like everyone's trying to take something away from you. And then that reduces you to that of a baby who's always whining and complaining, right? So, but you have everything. You have everything the world doesn't have. You have the eternal kingdom and yet you're complaining and you feel like a victim and you're complaining about persecution. I I put me into the category too. I mean, I'm, I'm with you, you know, I'm say you, but I mean me as well. You know, we need to really understand this because if I, as I've understood it more, there is a, (laughs) we had a, let me give you a small example. We had a, uh, an appointment to, and I don't even watch the TV anymore, really. I just look for movies, and I'm so disappointed with those. But I still have a you know flat screen and a you know direct TV thing, and because we're out here in you know middle of nowhere, it's not like you can just go somewhere in the city and you know they just. So we have this screen, right, which has become more and more of a disappointment, and it's pretty nice, you know. It's, I've always uh, enjoyed the surround sound capability and all that. So we have it and direct TV, and and basically. In order to get these more on-demand movies, you have to have this cinema connection kit. And what that does is it ties in with your Wi-Fi and it makes it so that you can, um, you know, watch these movies on the satellite. For some reason, you have to have that hookup. And, um, you know, there's quite a few. Some of them are even in the theaters already and, and, and yet they appear on the screen. And they're available, you know, for that whatever monthly fee you're paying for that thing and and that's you know pretty cool i thought so i made this appointment and they were supposed to be here to yeah it was like i don't know maybe 99 100 dollars to hook up this cinema connection thing so i'm waiting you know and uh uh, we waited all day for the appointment and then we called the next day because they never showed up and um the way it used to be with me was you see you know, like persecution, right? And going nuts. And I just didn't really, you know, the next day I sort of, I blew it off. I didn't, I didn't think, no, I didn't go to the point of thinking there was a conspiracy. That must be Satan. They just didn't show. It got worse. It got better. It gets better. The next day I called and the guy was horrified on the phone. He goes, not only did they not show up, they canceled your appointment without telling you. He says, as a company, this is Direct TV now. He goes, we don't do things like that. I mean, that's totally against company policy. And he was all—he was actually upset, but I wasn't upset. I was just kind of like, you know, um, I would have been upset a few years ago, before I understood that particular, before I got in my heart that Rama, that lesson. And then he wanted to take it. He said, I will give you the president's private post office box number. And he, he wants to read all the complaints because he, 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 he's trying to make the company better, you know. I said, that's not necessary. He goes, well, I'm going to tell our regional manager then what happened to you. I say, it's fine. What I'd like is the cinema. And while we're at it, since it's a free upgrade, I'd like the new Genie, you know, Genie, right? The, the new DVR, too, while we're at it. He goes, well, that goes to a different department. So... He was like, and he gave me all this money off, you know, my bill, and he he just was going overboard. I received a total abundance in that. I got huge discounts. I got stuff taken off my bill. I mean, you name it, he, he any kind of gimme he could give me, he gave it to me. I didn't make any complaint. I was just explaining, you know, can we, you know, get someone here to, you know, so I, I went at it with, I, I, my feeling in my spirit was, I got a lot. I'm happy. I'm, you know, I'm just taking care of this. is just, yeah, this is what happens. You know what I mean? That attitude. And look what happened. I was given something like $200 credit for stuff. I was given, you know, access to the president. I mean, any kind of thing a complaining guy would have wanted, but I wasn't complaining. I was just trying to, you know, go at the next step of, you know, getting it done. And I blew off the time I was waiting. I don't care, you know. Nothing that I do is not, you know, everything I do is ordained by the Father. And, and, you know, in some way, he could see it from when I was, before I was born. So nothing is out of place in my life. Waiting for the day didn't ruin something else. 
And so I got total abundance from this DirecTV. Then they gave me those DVR for nothing. And then, you know, they've set up this appointment, and, you know, with somebody else, not the people that canceled. So I didn't even have to contend with it. I didn't have to deal with let's punish them for canceling my appointment, just refusing. They just, he said, we've never heard of anything like this before. These people just refused to come out and put that cinema connection kit in your um you know, on your DVR where they refuse, they actually canceled your, and they didn't tell you. You're entitled to great grievance. And I wound up with almost like everything being a freebie because I didn't go at it like that. I wasn't, I was satisfied. I was filled up. I was, and in being satisfied when I was on the phone and Trish was going, I can't believe it, you know, and feeling like there'd be a big confrontation, but there wasn't. Nothing. You know, did they intend it for harm? Did they know who I was? Did they know that I was with God and so they canceled it and all that? You'll never be able to. Who cares what reason there is for any kind of negative thing? It happens to the Satanists too. So who cares? What To me, it was just like too little of a job. You know, uh, I'm not driving all the way out there to put this stupid thing in. We don't make any money. Gas, blah, blah, blah. it was probably some mis mismatch with how much they would make versus the company of direct that had nothing to do with me. But even if it did, oh, that's Zeph. Yeah, we've been there before. I'm not doing a damn, that's a, he's, uh, no, he's not one of us, you know, no, I, uh, I don't even, I know that goes on, but I don't, I just assume it's going to happen. So I don't, I'm not going to focus on it. Anyway, so I got to this level of dealing, you know, and I'm not like that all the time. Sometimes, I'm, you know, I take personal offense. But when I take personal offense, what happens? I don't get anything, certainly not $200 worth of credits. I get nothing. You know, what little, that grievance I had was legitimate and um, I lose. Because of the attitude I had, what I was given more. Nobody, none of us who knows himself and has this connection. Like I I spoke to the father last night in the night. I broke down weeping and weeping and weeping and weeping and weeping. Deep, hard, you know, weeping. And then I realized it was the father weeping within me. And he was being able to experience that sadness, which I don't own personally. We all have it. And I understood something, but I I didn't feel like a victim. I felt like it was normal to weep and, and good for me. Brought me closer to the father as well, and I felt comforted. He can't comfort like a person right there putting their hands on you. And a lot of times that doesn't really work anyway because it's natural to cry. I think what was on my mind is when I said that Jesus, I told the Lord that I look forward to the, I was talking to him about the Lord of Lord and King of Kings and that the whole chapter of Revelation 19 and and when the true king comes to rule and reign Um, I'm still getting choked up now. And that's good. It's because after all this we've been through, as the brunt of their joke and all that. It'll be put right. But I don't feel like a victim. I mean, just because I grieve over all the pain. It's not the pain. I grieve when <laughs> the king comes to rule and reign forever and ever. And this whole thing is gone, then I feel like weeping thinking about that. (laughs) 
And then it turns out in the end that God's weeping because he wants to experience that. It's the ultimate drama. You know, when when the ordeal is over, then you weep, right? During it, you're kind of embattled in that war. You know, you're contending. At the same time, we have to overcome, meaning we have to know who we are. Overcoming is this. You know who you are. You're totally grateful. You're totally stoked. Because you know that you exist in the forever kingdom. You know your father loves you. You know that all is well. You exist and you live and you show the others that you're just, despite what they would say, well, gosh, if I were you, I'd be weeping every day, whatever. And you're filled with joy and giving and and flowing and a big light bulb. And, you know, the the Lord establishes that as, well. I believe that is probably just looking at that as a witness. He's establishing that as a witness as to the truth. And so to you, will be given even more knowledge and more comfort about who you are. I know it's a hard thing to take to realize that not all people that claim to be human beings are of God. I understand that's, you know, but the Bible is screaming about the two seeds from the very beginning. And there's just nothing we can do about it. You know, it is the reality. It's got nothing to do with us. It had to do with something between God and Satan in the very beginning. And, you know, dispassionately, we need to just look at the truth and just understand it's not personal against you that there's wheat and tares, that the wheat is the devil's seed. And that, I mean, I'm sorry, the tares are the devil's seed and the wheat is the good seed or the, the... the wheat is the children of God. And, the, and, if, and if Satan told the story, it'd be like, the wheat are my children that I take care of upon the earth in real time today. And the tares are those children of, of Jesus. So wheat and tares are metaphors. Wheat and tares are metaphors. It's not like the tares become the wheat and the wheat, the wheat does not, the wheat, the tares never become weeds. I mean, shoot. The tares never become wheat. I got upset there. I am off here. The tares never become wheat. Upset, I was good. Uh, it's fine. You got to hear the same emotion that I had last night that made me go on for an hour of crying. And now, you know, it, it brought me to tears again. I... Just thinking about things being put right, you know. But imagine it from their perspective, from the other seed. Things would be put wrong. In other words, their great kingdom, they they don't see the earth as evil. They just see it, that it would be a great place if you and I weren't here. That is the power structure elite that rules the world. That's the way it is. There's no, um, mystery here as to the truth that I'm speaking. Once you accept what was taught that Jesus taught and the mystery of the kingdom, the mystery of reality about the two different gene pools, then you understand it's not anything personal and it's not a judgment against God because there is that arrangement. The devil was allowed to have his own. And God had his own. And they had. there's a whole story that's going along with that that's sometimes beyond what human comprehension. And so rather than putting your own opinion on it, like, gosh, everyone should have a chance. And that's not the way that was, you know, by skewing the scriptures and saying that reality doesn't exist. All we're doing is putting ourselves in the realm of emotion and we're putting God in a box and we're taking the rhema out of it. We're stealing that word of God and the thorny thorns and thistles and whatnot. We're, we're destroying God's word and we're destroying 
our relationship with God and, and allowing him to be the mystery that confounds us but, but causes us to be in love, you know? We're, 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 we're taking our walk and throwing it down the, t- you know, we're not keeping the Sabbath holy. We're, we're hurting everything because we're limiting him. He wanted to teach us this today. He did. Yes, the Satanists, the New Age, they have this whole thing going as well. There's no difference between Satanists and New Age, or they're, those are the same. New Age or is a Luciferian, is a Satanist. So they just, maybe they, they're not murdering people right at the moment. You know, they're, and they consider themselves different from, say, the Nazi-like New World Order. And they're, they're, no, they're exactly the same, because that's the religion of the New World Order. That was Hitler's religion. So they're kind of a little, a little bit deluded there, but, you know, they're cute, right, for them. Many prodigals in that new age, uh, because these people don't murder people. They're, they don't abide in Satanism, you know. There's a lot, but see, they've been burned by religion, and they think they know better, and they ran to the East, and they thought Buddhism was cool, and they want to sing with the dolphins and play on the spheres and whatnot. And, oh, gosh. And they think that's reality, and there's going to be this ascension. There's going to be an Armageddon bypass, and which is a total Luciferian concept. And if they only knew that them and Darth Vader were singing the praises of Lucifer together, they would understand. <laughs> now, in Star Wars, they had... Um, you could go to the dark side or from the dark side to the light side. It was not not often, but it was possible. I contend, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it is not possible. In my reading of the word thus far, and I've been at it for quite a few years, it's not possible that the wheat would become tares and the tares would become wheat. It is virtually not possible. And um, I've read Wormbrand lately where he was claiming the opposite of what I just said. And I, I believe he's, you know, with all due respect, I believe he's an error on that. He was kind of like, you know, more the Billy Graham line on that kind of stuff, even though he was horrified by Billy Graham uh, being such a hypocrite. But, I mean, it was more the traditional, you know, church view that, you know, and because he'd seen, like, guards who were nasty and tortured people become Christians, which means they were not really um, them to begin with. They were a prodigal. Yes, I believe the concept of prodigals, that there are the God seed over there working in the world, many of them. But the Lord will gather because Jesus said, the sheep hear my voice and the good shepherd loses not even one of the sheep. And that that to me is is talking about this genetic, this seed thing. He's also called the the, the Pharisees and scribes and basically Judaism in general as the religion of the devil back then. Because look at what Herod did. I mean, they did not want the Messiah. They talked about the Messiah They were all saying, we're waiting for our Messiah. We're waiting for our Messiah, Emmanuel, and all that. And what happened is, but they really didn't want him. In other words, the churchianity of the day, those who say they're Jews but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, they, they set up Satan in the synagogue so that if anyone came along being the Messiah, they, they would make sure to eradicate that right off the bat. They don't want their people to have the Messiah. And they've had a campaign against the Messiah all these years, not against, I'm not saying against Jesus, but against, you know, they talk about the Messiah to give the people hope and then they lock the door. In other words, they themselves lock the door to the truth and they don't enter in either. Meaning the Messiah, that's the truth. That the Lord will come to save his own out of this backwards situation of evil. And he will deliver his to eternity, to Mount Zion, to the promised land, to the eternal kingdom. And this is the, the, the prophecy of the Jews. And the, but the leadership is, and now lots of these Jews have you know, left and they're running Hollywood and they're doing everything else because they're, the, they're not the seed of, of God. 
you know, any Jew who rejects Yahweh is, you know, they're not Jews, period. They say they're Jews, but they're not. They have this big cultural Judaism thing going, and they, they go to delis, and they eat this and that, and they have bar mitzvahs, and they have Hanukkah, and they do all this stuff, but they're not Jews. You know, they, they're, they say they are. They go through, the, they, they believe they are culturally, and if there's, you know, a Jew is not a genetic thing. A Jew is really, well, it is and it isn't in the sense that um, if you're wheat, there's only one God. You're not going to divide him against all the people. If you have the wheat, I don't care what religion you're in, then technically you'd be a Jew, but Jew is a false term. They they use it now to be a cultural term and a, and a genetic term uh, and the tribes and all that. And if you look at the genetics, it doesn't add up either. A lot of these are con- converts from the Middle Ages and things, and then they claim to be cultural, you know, genetic Jews tied to Abraham, and they're not. What ties us to Abraham is belief in Yahweh, this God. That's how we become Abraham's seed, period. Thank you, end of story. It will never be different than that. So Jews claiming to have this inside track with Yahweh, they don't. Most Jews today have rejected the Torah and rejected the teachings and rejected the Lord. And they uh, basically have uh, pursued the world and they become very successful at it. Many of them and many and many not. But whatever. They are not brethren. They're not superior. Christians think they're superior. We have to bow down. You don't have to bow down. to A secular Jew is not beloved brethren, period. And you have to wonder when a person gets to be in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, right? You have to wonder at that point if they really ever did hear the, you know, if they really are brethren. Once you get to be, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's conversions. I mean, I guess Nicodemus might have been an example of an older guy that was, but, you know, by the time you hit 60, let's say, you should have it in your golden years from that point forward, you should be just serving God and serving your truth, you know, Jesus. And there shouldn't be any equivocation about it whatsoever. And there shouldn't be a worry about persecution or anything else at that point. You have to wonder when there is. The Lord did not give us a spirit of fear. He that's in me is greater than he that's in the world. I walk in that confidence. I'm grateful for everything. I'm grateful for the sun blinding me in my face right now. And I'm grateful for the tears. And then i Grateful for this lesson today. The lesson is not being grateful and good things will happen to you. The lesson is that you are, you know, the answer to the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. It's in you. And they are not. And there's two, the wheat and the tares are not. The tares are not weeds. I mean, sorry, here I screwed up again. The tares are not wheat and the wheat is not tear and they never will be the same. It's not a matter of switching your allegiance or belief. The, the, the church is filled with people that belong to Lucifer who are Lucifer. Folks, there are Luciferian prodigals. They belong to Lucifer, but they're running after God and they just aren't you. You know who you are. You know who your brethren is. And the gratitude we have is that we are in the kingdom as it were already. We're shining forth. We're here on a mission. We're not here. Look, they're here to go to Disneyland and run around and enjoy themselves. Let them. Well, I don't like Disneyland, but I like going to the beach and different things, and I'm going to do that. Wherever there's people, wherever there's things going on, I'm going to you know, do that too, and I'm going to have a great time. I'm going to have a great time splashing in the water. What I love is what I love seeing kids playing, you know, and they really take it seriously. And then seeing people playing and seeing people doing silly things. I think that's marvelous. You know, I don't have to put on religious airs because I'm insecure about others being in the room. So therefore, I must be the God guy. No, I just am me. I don't have to say anything. I don't have to conform to that idea. I've always been like this. They used to call me the God mind when I was a kid. And then later, same thing when I was older. The God guy, you know, and I never had any, I wasn't touting that I just was into all this. I was into it though. I was was into all these things, but it was just, it was, you know, as natural as, uh, 
and it was as naturally misfitting in the world at five as it was at 25. I got the same kind of persecution then as I did at 25. So it was supernatural, you know, but eventually when I got over the trauma, because Jesus healed me of the trauma, so when I got over the trauma of childhood and betrayal, um, you know, when, when your mother betrays you and all that, you know, you, the Lord's the only answer because if the mother betrays you, then you will be a victim like the world's betrayed you. The whole world is your mother. So the, the, the mother, terra firma, right, betrays you. The mother's like a symbol of the, of, the, of the mother, of Mother Earth, if you will. So you will, the whole environment will be your betrayer after your mother betrays you. And a lot of these people will wind up being either professional victims or some become criminals. If your father betrays you, you know, when it says forsake you, it also means betray you, abuses you, does something that changes your course of life. Um, if, if any mess with these little kids that otherwise would be mine, in other words, otherwise would be in the kingdom and with comfort and with joy in me, my children. Uh, but they get interrupted by others who traumatize them so they can't do that. It would be better for them to have a millstone wrapped around their neck and to drown at the bottom of the sea, said Jesus in Matthew 18.6. The Lord will always take care of his own. But so, you know, many of you grew up and you became teenagers and you had to be sequestered or you, you know, there's something wrong with you or sent to shrinks or whatever it was. And, uh, or in my case, you know, being, you know, upset about something when I was five. So I couldn't get beyond five years old. I was like a, like, um, I just couldn't mature into even teenager. I was just still crying over what happened because I didn't know what happened. Cause I, you know what I mean? My mind was all messed up and, and, and my memories weren't, and then I, then I understood. And over the years, I understood that people in the world, Satan will mess with Mark, put a thorn in, corrupt, um, you know, assault, sodomize kids, um, traumatize them, betray them, send them into slavery, send them into prostitution, you know, all these things and those traumas, the, 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 the Jesus is there to take those away from his own and, and completely heal them of that because yes, just like those people canceled the appointment, they were supposed to betray me. They were supposed to abuse me. They were supposed to try to get me on their side when I was four years old or whatever. They were supposed to have me, you know, understand that it was about bloodletting. They, I was supposed to split rather than be traumatized and upset. And split, then I could be fashioned into someone that would grow up to lead, to lead... The leaders of our society are those who were abused, which was initi called, also called initiated, and then brought up in the satanic way. And then they're the attorney generals and the people, you know, they're the people that run, you know, they're, they're the kings and the queens and whatnot. That, that sodomy becomes a, uh, it's a, it's a tool for, for connecting the, 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 the realm of Satan to the person forever. You know, it, it's not really about the act itself, except that it's a trauma to a child, obviously. And the ones that bounce off the mirror are become the sacrifices. And getting to understand how that works, and, you know, then you can understand Sandy Hook, you know, being, a, being that that was a blood sacrifice for the purpose of, you know... Uh, well, you know, the president is just, he's the ultimate in, in uh, seething Luciferian energy. I mean, if you can't see that, you're blind as blind can be. He is probably the best example of Satan's brood on the planet that's ever been uh, visible to the public. And yet the public goes along just as they will, like just derelicts and idiots who run the news media and run everything. And they just think somehow that... Uh, but I contend that these people were also abused and they will deny it, but they had to be. I know that in my own family, people were abused at, you know, four or five, and I could tell them they got a demon 
put in there and that at first they they acted like an animal for a while and then they then they accepted it and then they grew up with it but they're not separate in my case i didn't grow up with it in other words i never accepted it at that age and um that's because and there's only one reason it's not virtue no it's not special strength it's genetic period it's cuz of the, and yes the two different seeds can come from the same womb and i know serpent seeders hate to hear that cuz it blows the cain and abel story but it's true to their cain and abel my interpretation is genesis 4:1 the bible i'm good with that they say it was altered and you know and what not they try to fudge it to make it not work. Now it works. You Today you have two opposite. Cain and Abel can come from the same woman, any woman. It's not any strike against the woman either. You know, if the woman's Luciferian, if she's with the world, and is and it, it, she just is that, then a pure-hearted one, a God person, would be hated by her and she will betray it and try to set it up and hurt it, and maybe even try to set it up for a sacrifice. If her son or daughter is Luciferian like she, then they will be friends. And the person will, quote, go far. Well, how far can you go in 75 years? Not too far. <laughs> and I think I'll get off now. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he deliver you from all your traumas and, and all... May this rhema today be a final understanding, awakening for joy and not fear. And knowing who you are, it's joyous. We need to walk in that joy, amen, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray that, that this seeps into everything and changes things. For the better, Lord, for our people, not for the world, for I do not pray for the world, but I pray for our people, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you when I see you.